Hello and welcome to Roy Models Kit View Time. Today we've got something, to be honest, really exciting. This is ICM's new release of the 135th scale Sikorsky CH54, also known as the Sky Crane. Who thought we would ever see a 35th scale Sikorsky Sky Crane? Me, never. I, you know, let's face it, there's lots of great helicopters out there. There's still a lot to be done. This is probably one of the last ones I ever thought we would see in 135th scale. Maybe 48, 72nd, obviously we've seen before and stuff like that. But to actually get a new tooled kit like this is an absolute bolt from the blue, shall we say. I must admit, when I first heard about it and somebody mentioned it to me, I thought they were joking. Then I went off to the ICM website and saw some cat pictures and things like that, like a lot of us, and was absolutely blown away. Now, ICM, don't get me wrong, they bring out some fantastic kits and they are really, really nice done kits. So really, this should be an absolute gem. There's been a lot of hype about it. So I thought I'll get one in and we'll have a look. I'm not planning on building this one just yet because I'm hoping they might do other versions or somebody might do a conversion to convert one into something like an Ericsson Sky Crane, the firefighting one, things like that. So anyway, let's have a look down here in the box and see what we got. So nice big wide overhead shot to try and get this one in. It's huge. The box on its own is 53 centimeters. So uh, yeah, we know this is a monster. If you've been following us for a while now, you know we've been talking about it a lot. This was the Vietnam sort of workhorse, if you like, of the actual uh, cargo carrying capabilities and things like that. So consequently, it's got none of this in the middle bit, which obviously adds to weight. It's purely for carrying some, you know, utilities, various things, vehicles. I've seen it carrying helicopters, planes, artillery. Obviously, it carries the daisy catapult as well for making landing strips for helicopters. You name it, this thing can do it. So it's basically a derivative of the CH-53, uh, also known as the Jolly Green Giant. But obviously, this is the cut down, very much lightweight version. So all that power goes through its blades giving it fantastic lifting capability and it is quite a unique helicopter uh, in its sort of you know form and able to have a rear-facing pilot as well for doing crane on uh, winch operating so yeah really really good anyway as you can see nice bit of box art we got a little thing about obviously all the aircraft down here. I don't know how well that's going to go. So your kit number for this one is 53054. And then obviously we've got a couple of uh, different markings, I think, down in here as well. You get the two in the box. So that's quite nice. The box is... Ah, right. Okay. So it's sealed and it's in an outer sleeve as well. So there we go. We've got a bit of a break going on in here. So we just snipped through these. And then we might have to snip through the other ones as well, I think. So yeah, this is very nicely packaged, as we can see through everything right so hopefully then this should oh okay surprise number one is we've got two boxes which i must admit i was not expecting at all all right so we've got two boxes down in here so we will start with the first box first oh blades let me get this to fold over so down here we've got one giant pack wow this thing is an absolute beast of a monster of a kit we've got one and then i'm hopeful down under here we've got number two so looking at it i must admit i will be honest with you one of the first things i said when this kit's released is that i hope it's a one-piece fuselage because otherwise it's going to be a nightmare and it's definitely not a one-piece fuselage so oh clear parts they look nice very nice for the clear parts. All right, so we've got those. And always, we will start with the instructions. So let's get those out of the way. Right, okay, so in the oldie world instructions, oh, there we go, I was looking for those. We've got the decals, which we'll look at in a moment. So that's what I'm looking for. Weirdly, it's not usually the first thing I look for, uh, but I'm looking for parts that aren't used to give me ideas of other ones that are coming out in the future. So we've got one of them. What that is, no idea. Anyway, as you can see, it's basically broken down. So we've got obviously a forward fuselage and then a tail system into this one, which, okay, fair enough. I was sort of hoping that it would be a little bit more together, shall we say. But anyway, we'll see how that goes about. So obviously we've got the four sprues down in there. We've got a few more down in here. There's four of this type as well. So obviously this is rotor heads and stuff like that, as you might imagine, and down the back. So the only part not being used is one. So a little bit disappointing. All right, so straighten off into the cockpit. So we've actually got, got the anti-torque pedals, given their correct term, uh, down in here. So those, those being fitted down into this one. Instrument panel being fitted up to this one. It is a decal, and I'll be honest with you, spoiler alert, it's really, really basic. 
So I'm definitely hopeful that we'll get a nice 3D printed aftermarket, or if not, Photo Etch One come along to replace that because that's a little bit disappointing. All right, so we've got the under console down in the front here between the seats. We've got the collective, we've got the cyclics being fitted down in there, and then obviously going in there to make the full front end. It's got the seats going together. So obviously it is a sort of crew of three on these. So you have obviously pilot, co-pilot, and then the rear pilot, weirdly. Uh, how this one actually goes. So obviously we've got those ones down in there and obviously the cockpit parts being fitted. So you've got the, the, the rear pilot, which actually can control the, the actual helicopter as well for when they're doing lowering operations, things like that. That's down in here as well. And they sit slightly lower and to the rear with a got sort of God's eye view down on the actual lifted uh, piece of equipment. Then we're going over to onto here. So we've got a base plate fitting down underneath this one and then the sides coming in uh, onto here. So I'm just sort of looking around this one. That looks like it's the clear part being fitted. Maybe it's just the way they're actually doing it. But there we go. That looks just perhaps that comes into the front. Yeah, we'll just take a closer eye on that in a moment. But we've got the underplate being fitted down on here. Then we've got the sort of rear part being fitted down the back. And that one's going on. Then we've got the glazing going in afterwards. All right, so that's it. So traditionally, the sort of pilot in command always sits in the right hand seat. Uh, in helicopters it's a little bit different to sort of you know uh, airliners and things so again I don't know if it's switched around in this particular version just because of the other side anyway rear glass being fitted into this one as well so that's fair enough then I assume we're working into the tail system as this one all gets going down in here like that and making up a boom and again it's funny how they've tackled this and it was one of the things I did wonder about how they were actually going to do it so they've done it like a box section so again so you've got a spar system running down the back here and then obviously these are going to go on and laminate into this to give you a box into it which actually makes a lot of sense it'll be very very strong uh onto this one and give you a good solid spar going back and then this being one piece down the back here should actually lean into here quite nicely so that actually makes a lot of sense uh of how they got around the problem of it because it is incredibly large and as you can see my worry was is that you're going to have a plug-in with the tail go in but they haven't they've actually got a spar system running down in here with a box section so yeah very nicely thought out so that's all that system going in there giving you technically what is the fuselage running all the way to the back so yeah interesting way of doing all of that one front ends being fitted down onto this one we've got the overhead panels i assume being fitted into it as well so that one's being fitted down up there then the panel onto the top clear glass work goes in the front that makes sense and then we've got the actual doors on the sides and then obviously we've got the other lumps and bumps coming into this one. So again, it's an interesting way they've tackled it and it makes a lot of sense. And hopefully it'll give it a great strength going right the way through that. Because I was sort of mindful that I thought it would have to be a one piece going through. But because of its length, it was going to be a little bit of a problem. So that gets around that problem. I'm quite happy. All right. Then we've actually got, as you can see, the way they've done this box section means as well. We've got great strength on these as they come through on the side. To the actual gear now the only thing that worries me is you've got a hell of a lot of helicopter especially if you're going to hook a cargo under it on this part j well part uh, f18 just down the bottom here if that isn't strong i can imagine having some problems on this one with wheels bending and things so again it's just because there's a lot of it but hopefully because there isn't a full interior if you like in the back it should make the weight quite nicely so we've got the suspension and the travel and looking how this is done as well i'm hopeful that you can actually just perhaps take these side parts off to give full travel to this one if it has got you know weight isn't on wheels and things like that so that would be quite nice so again we've got a couple of tie downs being fitted onto it and then obviously they get bolted to the outside various parts going on making up this box frame over the top of that for the actual gear wheels various bits being fitted onto this one nose wheels we didn't see from the early pictures it's literally just a plug in the bottom again that looks really weak for something that's so very very big but again one of those will have a look better we've got the hoist and obviously the winch band fitted into the middle diamond sections in there various bits of piping being fitted onto this one which obviously is the fuel tanks so i assume it's the only place it can be on these will be up in here as well all right lots of piping work being fitted as you might imagine and then obviously we're starting we're down in here with the actual uh, tail rotor with the gearbox various parts to it down in there like that again lots more piping because it's all external on this one and then various things so you've got the drive shaft being fitted down in here to the lower gearbox uh, as well so then obviously the reduction gears and everything being fitted through and then coming along working away with the holes for the actual drive for the actual shaft as it's coming up 
from the tail rotor to the main gearbox. And again, other areas being pitted onto this one. So we've got combing and zone fairings. Then we've got the main rotor head itself right the way through being fitted. Lots of detail down in there because it's all exposed, which is what we'd like. Various other parts. I can imagine the aftermarket people being all over this and giving some, you know, some really nice perhaps resin 3D printed parts and stuff like that. That would be very exciting. So again, right the way through, there we go. There's the shaft being fitted right the way up from the main uh, gearbox to the tail rotor. And then obviously all the lumps and bumps which are gonna be needed to add this one onto it. And then again, we've got radiators, I assume. And then take some various things being fitted down in here on the top. And again, the main engine system itself, nicely detailed engine. And again, I can imagine the aftermarket ones jumping on this. But again, you've got a very nice uh, engine system being fitted onto this, onto this one. And again, you could have it just plain without the filters. All right, because I've seen lots of photos of them without these filters on the front as well. So anyway, you've got the filters that you'll build up and put those on and attach them down into it. And again, you could do it with out. And then again, all the other gear and all the other small parts of this one right the way over it, right the way through. We've got other hoists and lifting devices, obviously for when this thing is carrying, um, you know, perhaps pods and travel pods, things like that. The ho hoists and hinges just on both sides of those ones. Lots of various parts being fitted on this one. So we've got steps and, you know, you name it, aerials and everything going to be fitted all the way over this one, right the way through. And then again, tail rotor, simple assembly right the way through with this one. And then the main rotor head all the way through. And again, I'm sort of intrigued to see how these actually fit in. So that looks quite nice. And apparently they are just a slot fit. Because again, if you're taking this to shows, how this goes on is going to be a nightmare. So I'm hopeful that it's going to be a top and bottom and a nice slot fit into it. So again, there's that one. And then obviously rotor head being fitted in completes. So there we go. We've got one down in here. So this is the uh, 237th Assault Helicopter uh, Company, Vietnam, 1968. Or oh, we've got another one down in here from the 101st Airborne, uh, one of their ones as well. So there we go, 1969. So yeah, interesting stuff there. All right. Decals, as I said, to be honest, it is quite a weak spot. I'll be honest with you. I was hoping for a little bit more than an instrument panel than that is. Uh, again, ICM, they don't tend to do much detail internally, but again, it's one of those. I think that's what I'm going to do is wait just a little while, let the aftermarket guys come down on this, a nice quintal one or a sort of, you know, the old sets as well from Edar, people like that. I think that'll make some really nice difference uh, to your cockpit as well, definitely liven it up. Whilst we're doing this, we'll look at the clear parts. I don't think we really need to get them out because you can see they are absolutely gorgeous. Chunky. There's no riveting in the framework of these, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, but again, I'm not sure if it actually has it. I'm assuming it must have. But again, because they are very large on this, I thought we might just see a little bit more detail around the actual windscreen and areas with this one. The rear one, observation areas, things like that. The doors, the little windows pretty standard to be honest with that one right let's get into it so bag one we have a huge amount this aircraft incredibly modular lots of details one thing that really stood out to me though when i was looking at some of the uh, pictures of this is this gorgeous raised rivets. I can't remember how many it is this thing's got, but I think it runs into the thousands of individually sculpted rivets on this. So as you can see, it is immense for detail. These are all raised rivets, just like the real thing. So there's no recessed rivets. The panel lining's recessed, the details are done, but it actually is raised rivets as is the real thing. All right, you can see down in here, it looks absolutely incredible, beautifully done, very, very clean, crisp, and very sharp, which is the nice thing. This is that no section that we were looking at and wondering what is it? So we can see there now. And again, I assume this is over the top of the cabin, the roof, if you'd like. And again, thousands upon thousands, I should think, of rivets literally all over this thing, each individually created. But the detail, level of detail, very difficult because it's sort of a matte finish on these to pick them up in the light, but hopefully you can see that. That's really very, very nice. On the inside, it's devoid of any detail whatsoever, but again, it's a nice clean polish. Ejector pins are incredibly small. See that 
tiny, tiny, you probably wouldn't even have to deal with it. It's that small. So again, very, very nicely done. All the details, as you might imagine, are pretty much there. Again, beautifully done. Very, very nicely done. I've got one problem with it, which I'll talk about after we've had a look at other things. Again, it's pretty modular, this kit. So as you might imagine, we've got four of these. So we'll just have a look at one. So down in here, obviously, because of the, uh, the way that the design of it, various parts going over it. So we have got wheels and all the different bits down in here. This is sprue H. Wait, all right, that might help. So this is H down in here. And again, good, clean, crisp, tiny parts and the big parts equally just as nicely done as you might imagine. So if we start in here at the top all the small parts and then working our way down. So this is that filter system. It's all recessed. The actual inlet as well for the intake, very, very nicely done indeed. The tires look very, very nice. There's no weight on them, which is actually a bit of a bonus in this case, purely because if you are gonna have it in flight, as I know some people are planning on doing, then you don't want it to have any bulges on it. So again, this is that rotor system the way it actually goes so they're polished and bladed on the inside here so your blade will slip between it i'm just hopeful that there's enough meat in there plastic to hold the weight of the actual blades all the small parts even this little guy down in here number 87 as you can see absolutely tiny beautifully done working our way up the other side got the bottom of the, the box the other part of the wheel some more rotor parts and various other ones. So I say you've got four of these, all right, right the way through, but they're very nice indeed. Then we've got, get those ones apart, we've got down in here, as you can see, this is quite a complex sprue, really. Very nice, right, okay, so as you can see, a lot of plumbing and bits down here. I'm having a good look here, because we have got a tiny little bit of flash. It's just the curing. And again, this is where you get picky because it's it's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with any of this. It's just that when you can't find faults, you see the tiny little faults and it makes it sound like I'm picking on it, but I'm not. But it has got a little bit of flashing on the piping. So we've got a tiny little bit of flashing just over here, which you're going to need to clean off. And obviously it's a little bit of a pain when they're so small because you have a habit of snapping. So it may be one of these ones where just try and take a little bit of this off um before you remove it from the sprue less chance of it breaking then and then obviously you've got to do a lot of cleanup on these parts because there's multiple bits it's a fine bit so you've got one two three four five six uh sort of you know connectors on here so you're gonna have to clean up six of those and trying to do six without breaking it is a little bit of a pain all right but again multiple pipe work because again a lot of it is exposed it's all on the outside but hopefully you can see all looks very very nice so i think you are going to spend a bit of chunk of time on this one cleaning up um you know various parts as it goes up but generally as you can see this is all very very nicely done there's certainly a lot of it all right so there we go that's your sprue g there's no sign of any sink marks i can't see any miss molds or short shots or anything else like that just a little bit of flash on the tiniest parts and again that's just me getting picky now all right, so down in here, we've got the rotor head, some of the different lumps and bumps down here. We've got the instrument panel, things like that. All right, so that's very nice indeed. So again, if we start up here. So this is the tail rotor. Set so a similar design the way that this is gonna work, I assume, with each individual blade being sandwiched between the other ones. All right. There's the part of the rotor head just down in here. This is your instrument panel. It's like we're saying, it's all here, but it's very basic. So again, you might want to just think about going down the aftermarket route, just sand that off, stick something over the top, because that's face it, the decals are just going to look awful there. You're probably better off hand painting it, unless you're going to go through with, uh, you know, individual decals for each part, things like that. All right. So down in here, this thing running down the bottom is your prop shaft. It's going to go to your tail rotor. So uh, very nice. I assume that's the swash plate there. Little bits down in there. Lots of piping, like we said. So we've got multiple hoses all down in here as well. Be nice to pick out of lots of detail. Various bits. We've got engines. And again, we've got more of this drive shaft running down the back. And again, all looks very, very nice indeed. 
the typical ICM quality, good, sharp, details one area i was a little bit worried about and i think i'm sort of okay is this here so this is the main gear as it comes down it's going to be a hell of a lot on this but it's a good chunky part don't think we're going to have any problems with this part i think it's going to be okay actually so again i was thinking maybe the metal route might be an idea on that one but actually that's quite a chunk of uh, plastic down in there so hopefully that will hold it up all absolutely fine okay so that's baggy one this is baggy two, which gives us some of our sort of box system, the rotors. So again, we'll grab the rotors whilst we have them here, because we have got the rotors. They're quite thick, but again, it depends, as I say. It's one of those ones. If you want to do this in flight, you want them bending up. If you want it on the ground, you're going to want to bend them down. They look quite soft, but there's no uh, droop or pull molded into them they are just done flat which is a little bit of a shame and again rotors i think is one of those things they're such a big part of the helicopter and it certainly is on this thing that i just feel that it's a little bit lacking in detail i know there's only so much you can put on here but there is a little bit more detail than what we can see i think so again a little bit uh, shy on detail it's just that it's huge and it's something you're going to see this is where it's going to fit so it's going to be a slot fit of each one of these in which is fair enough, but I'm sure you're going to want to put a little bit of droop on these. I don't know without the actual sprue holding it, how much droop you actually get naturally. Because again, they're quite big. So again, that's one thing. But uh, as you say, so you've got pairs of those, as you can see. So that will be a fun sorting those all out. Again, right. So now we're into the actual main section. So as you might imagine, this is obviously the tail. So from sort of here back is just your tail on its own and you've got your boxing. And this is, again, absolutely plastered in riveting detail. So again, as you can see, if we go down this one down the middle for the moment, you can see, catch it in the light, lots of raised rivets all the way through. And again, loads on the front, on the back. So that tail section, again, you can see all of this riveting, catch it in the light. Just absolute tons of it, lots of detail, loads of rivets is on here, which I assume is the tails. Just as the one stabilizer tail. So again, very, very nice. Nothing really on the inside, as you might imagine, because again, this is that box section that's going to go and put it all together. But again, it's got some nice strengthening into this one right the way through. Again, my worry was and I will follow up this in a moment, but ICM's plastic is notoriously a little bit soft, and I was just worried that being huge as this thing is, if it's soft, it's going to be all over the place. But I'm hopeful with that box section, it should be absolutely fine. So again, now we're getting into the big stuff, so it gives you a little bit of a feel for how big it is. So over here, we've actually got the, the flight deck, which gives you an idea of how big that is. And again, there's no real detail in the actual cockpit, which is a shame. Because there's a lot going down on here. On here is the roof. So again, capture the details onto this. All going to be added in, but that's just your riveting detail and your plates. I assume this is the underside because in here is be where the main uh, hoist system, if you like, for the actual uh, lifting gear. And again, loads of rivets, as you might imagine. And then over here as well, we've got the side. So this is the pilot's uh, commander side would be on the actual starboard side. And again, the windows, and again, some real nice tension to detail in all of those. So that's all very nice indeed. And then again, next sprue up. So we're working across, this is at the top and bottoms for the tails, I would assume. Down in here, we've got the tail boom, uh, sorry, over here and on here. And obviously I think you've got the actual main gear legs as well. So again, very, very nice. So. Again, catch it in the detail. These legs look absolutely gorgeous right the way through. Very nice. As you can see, more gorgeous riveting detail. Looking very nice, both of these sides. So I assume this is the underside of the main uh, sort of, you know, wheels, sort of winglets, if you like, or pylons onto the side. And then down here on the front, really very nice indeed. Again, huge good big chunky lump okay and then this is technically what we've got here is the backbone of it all so this is the actual the main 
box sections of how it's all going to lock together. So this is what we're talking about. So, you know, if you've ever done like paper craft or sort of, you know, with wood and things, you know, you can do this and you'll know how strong you can actually make box sections out of this. So again, this is how it is. So this is that main one running down, which is going to be your connection area in the middle. And then obviously down in here, various other ones. So again, loads of good, strong strength into this one. So again, down in here, we've actually got the drives going into the uh, reduction gear, I suppose that would be for the rotors. So that one's going up. And then obviously plates, various items. And again, you can see we've got, got the, the lifting gears, the bits and pieces. Down on here, we've got what you got. These are those uh, box filters for the top. Some more of those items on the side. It's just huge. It's huge from every single angle, this thing, right the way through. So yes, there it is. Crikey. You do get a lot of plastic for your money. That's another question. So I've got three questions to this particular kit. First of all, it worried me from the outset, and it was why I was saying I hope this is in one piece, purely because ICM plastic, as you can see, is notoriously very soft. It's a lot softer than other manufacturers. And when you're dealing with things of this size, you want it to be strong. But luckily, I think it's gonna be okay because it's got that box section that goes in, it all interlocks in there. It's gonna make it really nice and strong. But that was my first worry because they do tend to be, as you can see, a little bit soft, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. The next biggest hurdle you're gonna get, and again, it's the right way of doing it before I get flamed for this, but this has got raised details right the way through. So as we all know, when you're doing joining things up together, you get some sanding gonna be doing, a little bit of filling, you're gonna lose all of that raised detail. So consequently, you need to put it back in because if you come through your weathering and you know just a little bit, say a simple wash or something, if those raised rivets aren't there, you're gonna see it because you're gonna have a barren area. So again, it was one of those where you think, well, it's so much easier to re-rivet recessed with you know, a riveting wheel or something else like that, you can simply go back and pop them all back in. But because these are raised, you've got a little bit of a problem there. So you are going to have to think about going down there. So, and again, God bless them, but Archer have now gone. But Archer raised rivets, which I think they've still got some here because I was using it recently on old Helikit, would be perfect for this. So I can imagine them getting very hard to find, or definitely you're going to have to look for, and I think Quinter do them these days, but raised rivets to put in where you might lose them. Now, luckily this thing is very much like armor. So a lot of the joints are gonna be on corners, so you're not gonna worry about it. But if there is an area where you've just got two halves that come together and you lose some riveting, that's gonna be a problem. So again, that's question sort of, you know, number two with it. Number three, of course, is the price. This is not cheap. It's a very, very expensive helicopter. You know, again, we had offers on with Flory Models and with PM Models for a discount for being the early birds, getting these in nice and early for the orders and stuff, but it's still an incredibly expensive helicopter. But I think what you've got here is something really, really unique. And when you say unique, I can imagine you're not gonna see many of these around. Again, this is one of those kits, it's quite expensive. It's not a shake and bake kit by a long way. It's gonna take some time to make this one right. Yes, of course, you could chuck it together, paint it green, then it's done. But when you're dealing with this amount of detail on here, you wanna get it right. So you might wanna wait as well for some aftermarket to come down the line. Because again, I think there's gonna be aftermarket, probably the cockpit, I'm thinking the engine, the gearbox, all the different pieces up here, the reduction gear is all exposed. And I think the detail on this kit is just a little bit basic. So you might want to add a little bit more. So again, you've got options. Wait aftermarket or scratch build it yourself and go through and just do a little bit more wiring to it, a little bit more detailing, a few bits and pieces to add into it. You can scratch build it. We are modelers after all. You can put it together. Overall, though, it's a really impressive kit. I am not disappointed. When I first heard about it, as I said, I was really excited about it. And then the reality kit comes in about where are you going to put this? 77 centimeters this thing is this big with the rotors tail rotor to main rotor is in size it's huge it's a monster you're going to have to think about this where you're going to put it when it's done the ceiling might be an option to have it as a ceiling hanger because it would look very impressive hanging from the ceiling uh something of this size but again i can imagine people being really creative with this one and doing things like it's lifting things so you could put a little bit of stress into the actual blades bit of lift into them and then obviously with a solid piece of wire you know holding it up 
to whatever it's about to lift. And let's face it, I've seen everything from boats under this, containers, the travel pods it has normally, as well as obviously multiple pieces of armor together, multiple artillery things, ISO units, aircraft, Hueys under it, you name it, this thing has actually carried over the years. So definitely one of those ones that is going to be fantastic and people's imagination is going to run absolutely right what they can do with this one. I'm going to hold out, I think I'm going to wait for somebody either to do a conversion to an Ericsson Sky Crane or obviously to actually, you know, then maybe release one, hopefully, fingers crossed. I don't know, by the way, I'm just speculating here, but it would be nice to see other versions of this one coming out as well. Certainly the later ones, the more modern ones as well, uh, with firefighting equipment and stuff like that. I think one of those in orange would be absolutely stunning. But anyway, that is the ICM Sikorsky CH-54A 135th scale massive helicopter.